Today we are going to be discussing AI cluster technology and how it can unlock the next stage of AI adoption through powerful collaboration that democratize AI infrastructure by driving down the cost and accelerating innovation. Thank you, Adi and David, coming in today. David, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is David Cantor. I'm one of the founders and the executive director of ML Commons. Uh, we're a nonprofit and uh, industry consortium bringing together industry, academia, and many different constituencies to make AI better for everyone, to make it faster, more efficient, and safer. That's very interesting. And how about you, Adi? Yeah, hey, I'm Adi Gangedi. I'm a production network engineer at Meta. And uh, I help build and scale RDMA training and inference clusters at Meta. Uh, Meta has been building training clusters for a few years now. Um, and uh, I've been involved in several aspects of these clusters all the way from day one. Uh, today, we have a large team managing these clusters. So it gives me an opportunity to focus on AI training performance, specifically from a communications and network standpoint. Very interesting, very interesting background. And David, tell us a little bit about your ML Commons, what you do and what kind of things you have been thinking about. Yeah, so uh, ML Commons really got started with the MLPerf benchmarks, which is part of what's bringing us all together today. Um, and it was sort of founded in the early days of machine learning and we didn't have good standard ways of measuring performance. And so, you know, we got the whole community together. We built some standard measures for AI training. Um, so that became MLPerf training. And then over time, we've really branched out into inference, whether it's in the data center, on IoT devices, on, on smartphones. And really here, the goal is how do we bring together researchers, production engineers, sales, marketing, everyone on making AI more capable. And so if you're a customer, you know, MLPerf is a great tool to figure out what should you be buying to help validate a vendor's claims. And one of the things that I'm really excited about that the team has done recently is, first of all, we've added a lot of Gen AI benchmarks, uh, but then we also added power measurement so that you can see whether it's data center inference or training of these large scale models, how much power and energy are you using? But again, it's all in service of bringing this information together and helping bring together, you know, buyers, sellers, researchers, advanced developers, and, and kind of driving the community forward. And we've seen in the five years that we've been around, we were able to get, you know, something like 50x better performance, which is, you know, way faster than what we would expect. So Thank you, David. That is very interesting. And it's amazing the kind of work you're doing. Yeah. So Adi, tell us about that Meta and how you have been working with ML Commons. Yeah. Actually, interestingly enough, Meta was one of the founding members mm -hmm. and all, has been there all along the journey of ML Commons. Um, you know, more recently, Meta's Llama 2, for example, actually is one of the inference and fine-tuning benchmarks uh, uh, as well. Um, and in general, I think benchmarking and the work that David and ML Commons team is doing is really, really important, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, with benchmarks, you can really understand how ML models stress infrastructure or what tasks they're able to do, and you're able to, like, reproduce them and repeat them. And if you cannot reproduce something, then it's really, really hard to improve it or to make it more reliable or so, right? So that's a very, so benchmarking is a very, very fundamental aspect of, you know, what helps us, helps these, you know, scale these clusters, uh, things like that. And we are really committed to uh, actually engage in ML Commons. We are active members, for example, of the Chakra work group that is focused on improving communications performance and representing the communication primitives of the AI ML models. No, so Adi, this is really interesting, the kind of work your organization is doing and leading the effort in making this solution very scalable. This is very helpful. So David, tell me about what do you think is the next coming from ML Commons and what do you think the kind of things you have in mind? Yeah, so again, you know, one of the things we spend a lot of time doing is working with, you know, companies that are really on the cutting edge, you know, Meta, Microsoft, Google's, all, all of our members help to contribute. And so one of the things that, that I've certainly seen uh, is, of course, there's the explosive rise of large language models, image generators, other forms of uh, 
uh, even more computationally demanding machine learning where we need larger and larger systems to satisfy them. And you know, sort of for the first time ever, we're starting to see people talk about inference using the network, right? And like for a long time, when we started out, when I led MLPerf inference, it was just a single node thing, but now these models are so big, we, can, we may not be able to no, do that sense. anymore. And so, you know, that's sort of one trend I see. Um, the other thing is from, from an organizational standpoint, we're starting to look at things like end-to-end -end inference. So how do you incorporate things like uh, RAG or other augmentation techniques uh, with uh, LLMs and other things? So, you know, we've seen this rise in vector databases. How do we think about that? Uh, and then there's a lot of cleverness uh, things like mixture of experts that starts to say, hey, let's maybe de-emphasize just straight compute and let's think about a blend of compute and mm -hmm. networking and control that gets us to a, to a different balance. So, you know, those are some of the things I'm seeing as well as, you know, sort of a renewed push around uh, energy efficiency, especially around next generation data centers. David, that was a very interesting background you gave, and you explained to our audience how networks play a very critical role in building a large-scale infrastructure for large language model and for inference and training. So this is very important for Juniper too, because Juniper is also in the forefront of building networking product, and we want to make sure our products really work well for these kind of use cases. And Adi, I would like to understand from you how, what kind of things you have been doing, which you are basically uh, bringing the, to the forefront to all this networking technology. You want to share your perspective? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, the thing that I want to echo is that network and communications are a very, very integral part of uh, you know, being able to run uh, these large models um, or TLRM models, any, all of these models in like a stable fashion, mm -hmm. but also in terms of uh, uh, you know, extracting the most amount of performance mm -hmm. uh, out of these models and out of these clusters. Um, so the communications is, is a stack is like really the key. And there are several things I think we are doing in terms of uh, moving the needle here. Uh, definitely, you know, one of the challenges that we're trying to solve is that, you know, the DLRM models, the ranking models, the kind of traffic patterns that they produce, and the generative AI large language mo models, especially those ones with training, they produce different traffic patterns. And the, and the you know, traffic patterns produced by distributed inference that like David just mentioned are also slightly different. So, you know, can we build fungible clusters for all of these use cases? Or in some cases, do we have to build specialized clusters for some of these applications, right? So that's something that we are actively looking into and trying to solve. Um, and, you know, as, you know, we talked about Gen AI models, as those models scale to a very large uh, scale, um, reliability becomes like very, very important. Um, any systematic unreliabilities in the network, uh, you know, or so needs to be like really, really addressed. Um, and even after you address all of those concerns, just by the fact that you have so many links, so many switches, so many GPUs, no, training, um, it gets really tricky in terms of being able to avoid interruptions to the jobs. So if you cannot avoid it, if there is an interruption, how do we very quickly realize where the failure is and isolate it? Um, how do we kind of Make, get these jobs to start really fast. So if there are some initial network synchronizations that they need to do before they go on the fast path and continue training, how do you kind of reduce that synchronization time in the beginning? So some of those are all the things that are like very, very important from a reliability standpoint. But there are a lot of things also that we are doing in terms of making these clusters more performant. Um, and for example, network load balancing for our Rocky clusters, uh, and our infinity brand clusters is like fairly important because if you cannot load balance all the traffic from the collective communication patterns produced by these ML models, then uh, you know your, your tail latency increases. Your next training iteration is running slower, right? So you know you need to manage congestion, you need to manage load balancing, you need to customize the scheduling of some of these applications uh, so that you know optimal you know infrastructure is. Is, is allocated to these uh, these uh, large models um, to make them performant. But yes, I think overall networking is and, and communications are absolutely in the forefront of enabling all of these uh, revolutions around uh, generative AI. This is amazing, uh, Adi, what you told about 
And we have some experience when building this AI labs and we trained some of these large language model and some of the things we brought out, Juniper saw all those things are left to. So I'm glad you are leading this effort and educating our audience in what kind of challenge and how to overcome those challenges. Thank you very much, Adi and David, for joining us today. And thank you, audience, for watching us today. Thank you.